Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to this astrological exploration into the topic of enemies. Now you might be wondering what is going on in the sky to prompt this topic? Well, this topic doesn't spring from anything that's happening in the sky right now. I haven't even checked actually, but this topic springs from the fact that last time we looked at who are your friends and I'll point you to that video if you missed it you might want to take a look at that because I know a lot of you are wondering where is my soul tribe how do I find my people you know we do have Saturn in Aquarius which started in early 2023 so people are really looking for their friends they're looking for soul tribe they're looking for their people and because we looked at friends, I thought, well, why don't we take a look at enemies? Also in the Patreon channel that I do with my astrology students, we have been taking a look at friends and enemies in terms of the planets, which planets get on with each other and which planets do not get on with each other. So that's a different topic, which we're not going to cover here today. What we're going to do, and I'm going to hit record on my trusty iPad, uh, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to take a look at the sixth house and I'm just going to mark that up here. So we're going to take a look at the sixth house. We're going to take a look at your sixth house and I'm going to read for every single sign how enemies perhaps come into your life or how they form or how you experience them and as well what to do about it, how to draw a boundary with people in your life and we'll just go briefly into each sign i won't do anything too in depth but this is just a little bit of food for thought this is just a bit of investigation astrological exploration you know there's nothing hard and fast here and what would be really wonderful is if in the comments below you would like to tell me how this information lands with you and of course how you experience this very thing uh, because it, it can be you know, you might offer some insights through lived experience uh, as to how this really manifests in your world. I love the comment sections in these videos, guys. They're so incredibly rich. A lot of you are sharing, you know, your various placements and how the topic at hand works with your chart. So feel free to share in the comments below this topic of enemies and how, how this comes up in your life so we're going to be spending time here in the sixth house we're going to take a look at the sixth house lord and that's about it it's a very simple episode this one and in contemplating this episode i was thinking about you know i was thinking about enemies friends and enemies and i was thinking yeah i don't have really um, too many enemies I've got a pretty quiet sort of life and uh, I don't have the, the other thing is I don't have any planetary activity in the sixth house mind you when a house is empty uh, as my sixth house is that can be a really powerful house actually there is the empty house theory and that will be one of the things I will be teaching on patreon so that will be coming there that's where I'll be talking about that kind of thing um, unexpected and empty houses can be very powerful and profitable houses so that's just something to bear in mind uh, and, and that's possibly why actually I don't have too many enemies because my sixth lord is seated quite nicely and my sixth house is is empty as well so that's why I don't have too much activity here in contemplating this topic I did think about um, the ninth house because I was doing a pick a card reading and one of the things while I've been contemplating this topic one of the things that I've realized because I started thinking about defense is the first form of attack but when I started thinking about defense that took me straight into the ninth house ninth house you'll have a lot of people who've got say for example a phd or they easily attain a phd when you've got a really brilliant ninth house and what do you do when you get a phd 
you have to, at the end of it, I believe, and I should probably Google search this, but from what I hear of you guys, my clients who book me who have PhDs, a lot of you will tell me about this process you have to do. You have to defend your thesis. Okay, so that's how I know about that. And um, yeah, I mean, what I discovered as I was contemplating this topic of enemies was that a lot of times people who we think are enemies they're actually not. They're just, they're actually in the ninth house and they just have different beliefs to us. Okay. So um, what got me thinking about that was that one of you had very kindly put uh, in the comments of one of my videos, you'd put a link to some controversial videos by Dhruvrati, who has posted videos saying that, you know, um, he doesn't think astrology, I think he thinks it's a silly thing it's nonsense and why do people believe in it and for those of you in my western audience who might not know of him i'll give you the example of richard dawkins i think richard dawkins is a good equivalent uh you know to that sort of thing richard dawkins has done a lot of videos trashing astrology trashing psychics trashing all of this stuff that we're into here right so and someone might ask me well what what do you say to such people how do you defend yourself and that's really what got me thinking about this topic as well. So we've got enemies here. Enemies. Uh, and we've got here just defending beliefs. I'll put here defense or defending and I'll put beliefs here. Okay. So in the ninth house, we're defending beliefs. I thought about Dhruvrati, Richard Dawkins, such people, they belong in the ninth house. They have different beliefs to me. And that's all. You know, that's, that's how I view them. In fact, I've got Richard Dawkins, I've got his chart open. You'll see that his Rahu is in Virgo, okay, because what I'm looking for is I am looking for sixth house or Virgo. So we've got Rahu in Virgo here, but Lord of Virgo is seated in the ninth house. So he's very much a man of beliefs and he will fight people, Virgo, right, fight. Uh, and I know in the Western system, I don't think they really associate Virgo too much with fighting. But here in the Vedic system, we do fighting, drawing lines, drawing boundaries. Okay, so I'm going to write here, drawing boundaries, drawing, whoops, can't spell, boundaries. That's in the sixth house there, sixth house Virgo. So the next topic that I want to do, the next exploration I want to do, I actually want to go into the ninth house and I want to look at how do we defend ourselves. So we'll do that in the next one. But when I started thinking about what is an enemy, I actually think an enemy is just, is really out to diminish you, is out to shrink you, is out to attack you. Um, and one could argue some of these characters, they are doing that kind of thing. Uh, that's true. But... Uh, when we look strictly at the sixth house, something wants to diminish you. Okay, so we've got up here in Pisces, we've got here the all is one. Okay, and if you've watched some of my old videos where I've talked about the sixth house and Virgo before, I've often talked that this is the place um, of the height of ego. Height of ego. Uh, and division and what do we have division what do we have when we divide the number one lots and lots of times we have fractions so we have fractions here in the sixth house so something is trying to fragment you something is trying to diminish you something is trying to um, you know do that that kind of activity we also have disease and illness in here uh, which is not something we're going to be looking at, but that's just worth keeping in mind as we go. Okay, even I'll try to keep that in mind as I go. We'll see how we go. I think it's gonna be an interesting exploration. I've got some little hand-drawn notes with me as well. Let's see what happens. I don't even know myself. Um, those of you who'd like to join me, please do. You will ideally need to look at your ascendant or your moon, but equally, I know that some of you who are students of astrology, you actually enjoy watching the whole video. And this is one of those videos where it could be good to do that. So whoever wants to join me for the journey, or if you are Aries, welcome Aries. 
Aries, welcome. We are going to take a look at who are your enemies? Who might they be? Okay, well, what I've got here in my notes, it's pretty simple for you, Aries. Your enemies, or, or I don't want to use the word detractors. Let me just look that word up because I feel like I want a precise detractor. Someone who criticizes something, yes. Uh, criti critical energies, I've got here critics. Like if you're an artist, Aries, you might have some serious art critics uh, who try to diminish you or make life difficult, okay? Or there could be something about criticism being a part of your life here. So your enemies, um, if we're looking at that word enemies, I know it's a strong word, but let's, let's just go there, let's explore. Enemies could be through work for you. Uh, could also be, you know, because Mercury is lording your third house. So it could also be friends as well. You could have friends that um, later turn into enemies. You do have that kind of potential here as well. Could be clients. Could be clients. Colleagues. And definitely critics, okay, art critics, you know, there are fashion critics. I have watched on the internet, sometimes when I want a bit of downtime and I want to watch something mindless, I might tune into what's going on in the fashion world and yeah, there are all kinds of fashion critics. People are just critical of what people wear and styles and what's going on. So what to do, Aries, how with these friends, who turn into enemies or these work, these people at your work, people you work with, clients even, you could have difficult clients. Okay, and I worked in advertising, I know what that's like. I know what it's like to have very difficult clients. Um, what do you do? How do you deal with this? Well, the way that you're going to deal with this, the remedy is going to be the Lord of the house and that is Mercury. Got the little antenna up there. Okay, so we've got Mercury. So your solution or your boundary will be set by Mercury. So what you're going to need is firm, clear, logical, and non-emotional boundaries. And some of this will count on something like self-worth, how you feel about yourself. If you've got a high degree of self-worth, this will be quite easy for you to do. And if you want to have a look at your self-worth, you're really looking here at Taurus uh, and Libra, or you're looking at Venus. You know, you're looking at how your Venus is placed. But if you've got a high self-worth and, and good healthy confidence, you will be able to strategically set those boundaries. And I use the word strategic because sixth house Mercury, it's a very strategic sort of a thing. So it's strategic and it's non-emotional. You set those boundaries, use logic in your arguments. Uh, if you have to send an email, just take all the emotional words out. You know, just use logic, be detached, and you'll be able to set those boundaries, Aries. So I'm wishing you well, Aries. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now, Taurus, we're going to take a look at who might your enemies be. We're going to do a little exploration here. Your one is quite interesting, actually. Um, your enemy could actually be the person that you're married to. Okay, so that is you. This is your committed partner here, Libra, in the sixth house. So this could be committed partner. This is partner of all kinds. This could be your business partner. This could be your public, if you are a public figure, uh, or if you have an audience of some kind or some level of fame or platform or this kind of thing. Could be that your P 
people are quite critical of you. But definitely it could be your enemy. At times, you've got a little touch of what's going on in Scorpio. At times, you could even be your worst enemy as well. Uh, isn't that incredible? You. Yeah, so the, the, when it's you, when you are your own worst enemy, the thing to increase there will be discipline. That's the remedy there. Saturnian in nature. But what is the remedy here? I've got here for the sixth house uh, remedy, we do have Venus here. And it's the weighing scales. I'll try and draw little weighing scales. That's not bad. <laughs> it's not very good, but it's not bad. Um, I've got here do a pros and cons list. Do a pros and cons list. What you're looking to do when you, you're setting a boundary here with the, um, with the people in your life, if ever you need to set a boundary, you are looking to weigh up, okay, well, what, what is good about this person or these people or these, this group? It could be a group for you if it's an audience, um, public, I'll put here audience. You're, you're weighing up pros and cons. So what, what are all the good things? What are the not so good things? And in that weighing up process, you're kind of activating your inner judge. Whoops, that line didn't go where I wanted it to. There we go. Inner judge. You've got that judgment factor going. And in that, process you'll see broadly and you'll see clearly you'll have quite a big picture view so as you establish that pros and cons list and you're weighing things up you will come to some incredible conclusions and you will be able to find win-win outcomes okay win win outcomes so if it is for example your marriage right the, the, your married partner is is the one that's the enemy you've actually got something quite beautiful here with venus and libra because the approach will be gentle diplomatic diplomatic is the word you want to be diplomatic you want to be gentle diplomatic gentle you want to use feminine energy so it could be challenging with your committed partner but the way forward has some really uh, good outcomes here so it's actually not too bad yeah this is nice energy Taurus you can do it. You can set the boundaries. It's a tricky business, potentially, but you can figure out the way. It's about weighing things up, pros and cons, looking for win-wins, taking that big picture view. Taurus, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we're going to take a look at enemies this incredible topic i'm just looking at the time i think we're okay we're good gemini all right what have we got going on oh look at that you've got scorpio in your sixth house whoa yeah this is fascinating gemini you've got you have got the good stuff here okay so this is where people I'm going to want to play mind games with you. Let's have a look here. I'm going to put here mind games. I actually looked up. I typed in because I know that um, Einstein is a famous Gemini. So just for fun, I just typed in, did, did Einstein have hidden enemies? Because we've got Scorpio here. So I'll just write down hidden enemies, hidden enemies. 
And it was really interesting, the Google results, and you're the only one that I Google searched a famous person for, by the way. I, I wish I had the time to do it for every sign, but I didn't have the time. I was just working off the top of my head. And I just thought, okay, let's just see, did Einstein have, have hidden enemies? And it turns out um, the FBI kept a file on Einstein. Of course they did, right? So we're going to put here, might as well do it, FBI. <laughs> you might have some uh, big, big stuff watching over you, Gemini. Um, that, is, that is possible. You know, they kept it. They kept a... Um, a file on Jiddu Krishnamurti as well. I'm trying to think, what was his ascendant? Oh, I don't know. I've forgotten his ascendant. Anyway, I'm so tempted to look it up, but I'm not going to. Let's stay on track here. So I've got here mind games. All right, you might have hidden enemies. Hidden enemies, mind games. Um, I've got here hidden stalkers, people who stalk you, possibly. It is a possibility. I've also got here, yeah, the, the phrase psychological warfare. Isn't that interesting? Psychological. You see, you are ruled by Mercury. Okay, you're very intellectual. You're naturally intellectual. Whoops. Oh, come on. There we go. Naturally intellectual. You are gifted that way. So you're going to attract very smart and bored people. They're very smart, but they're bored. So that this is what they do. Um, what to do about it? Well, I've got here. This is, and again, this might seem like a, an unusual um, remedy, but this, this really works as a remedy. I've got a right here, remedy. Silence. You, you don't have to do a thing. Because let these monitor you, check you, whatever they have to do. Let, let them do that. You know, apparently they're, they're keeping tabs on all of us. They're recording everything. I just think to myself, what, what are they going to do with all this? Yeah, most of it's nonsense. All this, I, I mean, uh, I, just, I just don't know. But anyway, the remedy is silence. And a technique called the grey rock technique. Grey rock. Now you can Google search or search on YouTube grey rock technique and you will come up with a lot of videos explaining what it is and how to do it. But all it is is you just being completely silent and you don't give any energy back. If someone's trying to scare you or influence you or do any of these weird things, that's their karma. It's not yours. Okay, and I, I know you've got Scorpio here, so I'm kind of saying that is your karma, but it's like, it's not your karma. Karma, remember, is action. So allow the weirdness, but you just don't act. Yes, grey rock, silence, and don't act. The mind is capable of so much strangeness and weirdness. The mind, and we're all tapped into the collective mind as well. Sometimes when I watch my thoughts, I've got some of the craziest, weirdest thoughts. It's just like, wow, where did that come from? That's weird. But like, I've learned that not to react to the mind, to allow the mind, to watch the mind. That's it. That's all you have to do. And there's a high profile psychologist. I know I did work for her and I used to write her articles. And she told me that the difference between me and someone who sat opposite me is that I don't react to my mind. I don't react to my thoughts. And that's it. That's all that she she does as a remedy she she kind of um yeah she doesn't it's like her own mind doesn't scare her kind of thing it's very interesting you see with scorpio it's a bit of a power power game yeah power game and control 
So it could be all this kind of thing. It's also worth studying up on narcissist empath, uh, learning and understanding what that whole thing is about. That's going to be really good for you because, um, the, yeah, the whole what's the deal with the narcissist thing? I mean, yeah, manipulators, all that kind of thing. It's just good to know what such people do and the different types of morality out there. There's people with different types of morality where certain things are okay for them. Certain things we would never do. We would never dream of doing that. But they, for them, it's like, pff, what? You know, they're just like, well, yeah, this is how the world works. That's what they think. So, you know, yeah. All right, Gemini. Well, I could, I could ch chat about your one for ages. It's very interesting. It's perhaps one of the most interesting. Um, but yeah, don't, don't worry, you know, about any of this. It's not, uh, it can all be transformed. And the, the thing that you gain, I, I will leave you with something positive. I probably haven't been too positive here. I should leave you with something positive. What you gain by all this nonsense, right, if you have to deal with any of this, what do you gain from this? You yourself will gain a lot of power um, it, yeah, by not, um, by not falling into someone else's trap, you yourself become very strong. Okay. So this is, this is nothing to feel bad about. This is, in fact, this is a potential for you to really power up, uh, and, and become someone enormously strong. So there's, there's, there's nothing to be worried about here. Gemini. I want to thank you for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we're going to take a look at your sixth house and we're going to see what kind of enemies you might have to deal with as you go through life. So what have we got here? Well, we have got, uh, now I'm going to sum this up by saying higher authorities, higher authorities, authorities. I can't spell. There we go. So what's our first higher authority? Well, it's our parents, okay? And specifically, father. Father. I know we used to, we used to joke in our family and say something like, like yeah, if us kids were naughty or something, and you know, if, if it gets to dad, it's going to the high court, you know? It's going to the top authority in the land, right? So it's like, you might have that kind of thing going on there. If it if it gets to dad, then it's uh, it's serious stuff. I've got here. It could be the government. Okay. Whoops. Government arguments with father. Definitely, it could just be that. You know, as you're growing up, as you're maturing, you might have to fight with your dad for your rights. This can as well. We've got cancer here. So for the uh, females, you know, female cancers, you might have to, you know, you want, you want to, you're, you're growing up, you're, you're a teenager, you're 18, and you're like, you want to go to the city by yourself. You know, you have to have an argument with dad or something. It could, it could manifest like that. This could also be teachers, bosses, teachers bosses this is people who are in positions of authority they could turn on you it's true they could they could um turn on you they could attack they could diminish you it's it's a possibility and now if you're not at all spiritual you could take issue with god but it would be like a, a man-made religious notion of god i'm not going to write that one down but I did think about it. Now, what would the boundary be? How are you going to deal with this? Well, we're going to deal with it in a way that is Jupiterian. So you could, now th this, this is an interesting, um, this is an interesting possibility. I've got here, quote, a superior authority, but you could try to contact a higher authority uh yeah I'll, I'll stick with quote a superior authority I'll, I'll go for that quote a superior 
authority. You could quote a superior authority or and I mean, or you could call on the assistance of a higher authority, which I'm also seeing that that could be a risky business because like that could annoy the level below. So maybe that's not quite the way to go about it. I've got here definitely, definitely, definitely study self-development. Uh, or psychology. And that will be a way that you, you will be able to use knowledge as power. I do think that's going to be your remedy. Your remedy is the way that you're going to power up is through academic knowledge. I see that as, as working for you. And I think this is about taking your power back from these higher authorities and you being the authority and you having the knowledge. Knowledge is power. You act on your own behalf. So I do think this could be something along the lines of taking responsibility. I think I want to get rid of that. Take your power back. Yeah. Take your power back through taking responsibility. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, I think that is the way forward, Cancer. Very interesting. I'm wishing you well. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we're going to take a look at enemies. Who are, who and or what are your enemies? Now I have to say and or what because for you it's a bit of a what, not so much a who. Could be corporations. Corporations. Could be that corporations as a whole have been um, a hurdle or a stumbling block or you know, have been in the way, or maybe you've been trying to get loans and the banks have been really difficult, or you've had to deal with things in your life that are actually huge. You might have had some really huge obstacles. Equally, this could manifest as competition with people at work, competing with colleagues, Yeah, this could also be like um, you're stuck in a call center. You're stuck in a call center and you're being passed around a lot. Sixth house is call center. You know, sixth house is, uh, and this is that kind of call center. We've got a corporate kind of a thing here. Maybe when you call through to corporations, you're always stuck in that no man's land. Everyone's passing you around. No one wants to deal with the problem. I know I'm certainly going through that myself at the moment. Um, but yeah, this is actually something quite big. Uh, whatever your enemy situation is or or whatever that is that's that's kind of interesting equally I mean if you are you could be a lawyer which a lot of Leos are it's interesting Leo and Virgo they do make very good lawyers and you could be a corporate lawyer with this kind of setup now what is your remedy Okay, well, we're looking at Saturn here. So your remedy is kind of interesting because I was thinking about what's, what is bigger than Saturn's outer rim? How are you going to deal with this? Well, I've got here, now this is kind of interesting. I've got here the word imagination. And it's kind of like you of all the signs you will benefit from that law of attraction style visualization.
that is going to be helpful. Because if you're having a problem here, we're in the sixth house of problems. It's like you need a higher power. It's like you need to you refer it to God or something as well. I do have the word prayer here or luck. Um, prayer or luck. If you're dealing with some kind of big corporate thing. Because you might feel quite like the individual and alone or even small against this big corporate thing. Large scale issues. That is certainly where my thinking has gone on this for you, Leo. And as I say, I mean, this might not be the kind of thing that you are frequently dealing with. This might be the kind of thing that if you're buying a property and something goes wrong with the, with the bank or something like that. This is, this is like, I, I sort of also feel like these are not frequent situations. Uh, they're infrequent, these problems that you might have to deal with as well. Okay, so that's a good thing. But when you do have to deal with some kind of enemy situation, it is actually quite big. So yeah, I can kind of see that here. Equally, it could just be a colleague. In which case, your remedy is slow and steady wins the race. There's something about you being slow and steady. No rush. No rush as part of your remedy as well. Leo, I want to thank you for joining and we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. All right, Virgo, let's see what's going on here for you. So, who might your enemy be? Well, for you, Virgo, it could be older siblings. It could be people in your network circle. It could be friends. It could even, now this is an odd one, but it could even be strangers. It could even be people on the street, the people, you know. Maybe you don't like crowds. I don't know, maybe, maybe there's something like that. But there's something about the people or strangers could that you could just have random things going on with strangers that is a possibility so i'll put here strangers there is a little bit of stranger danger here virgo yeah stranger danger that is something to think about now what is your boundary okay so we've got oh that's a bit that's better <laughs> we've got here saturn and again, you're a little bit similar to Leo. I, I was just dealing with Saturn there with them. And I'm going to say imagination. Isn't that, that is unusual. Now, I, I know this is a bit of an oddity because we don't often think of um, why did I come to this word imagination? Because I'm trying to think what's bigger than Saturn. And if you look at how the zodiac flows, it's like Capricorn, Aquarius, and then Pisces. Okay, we end with Jupiter right we end with that big expansive energy so this is why i'm kind of thinking your remedy here is actually you you want to employ jupiter interestingly because what trumps saturn what is bigger than saturn it's it's jupiter is the last in the lineup so i've got here visualize healed outcomes outcomes plus win-win situations this is a little bit like Libra we do have an air fellow air sign here and so you are weighing things up 
and aiming for win-wins. So I do think that that kind of guidance and advice applies here as well. Yeah, interesting, Virgo. Well, it's something to contemplate. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're okay. All right, Libra, what's going on? Well, your one's really interesting. Yes, Libra, your one is really interesting. I took it in a couple of different ways. So the first way I took it is that if you are not spiritual, which let me tell you, wouldn't be anyone here okay because if you're watching this video you're very spiritual so it can't be anyone here but let's just take a look at it anyway so if you're not spiritual you might think god is against you okay But that's not you who's watching. So don't you worry about that. Now, the only thing I could come up with here, Libra. Libra, you are, look at that, you're Venus, right? And you are the diplomat. You're charming. You're friendly. Everyone loves you. I, I really struggled to find an enemy for you. But um, what I will say and this is unusual, but I'll run it past you and you can let me know in the comments, is that enemies might show up when you relax. Is that unusual? So I'll run this theory by you. So enemies show up when you relax. Okay, what do I mean by this? Let's say you go on holiday. You go on holiday and then something goes wrong or there's a spanner in the works or oh, there's a an argument breaks out or something happens it could have something to do with when you relax or when you're on holiday or um, that kind of thing it, it is a possibility I know someone who like the whole year he would not land a contract and he was the kind of person that would charge like hundreds and hundreds of pounds per day for a day of his time and when he would get a contract he would land a big contract and it was a lot of money and it was great so it was a big deal for him to land a contract but he could go for a year or two no contract or even two or three years there'll be no contract and but what would happen which was really interesting is that every time he would go on a holiday he'd land a contract so it's like every time he relaxed, work would come in. So I'm not sh quite sure how that fits in the scheme of it. This doesn't apply to enemies. But this is that kind of thing where, because we've got Pisces here, I am sort of seeing that there's something about maybe when you relax, there's a spanner in the works or something goes wrong or you get sick. Oh, classic. Is that it? I knew there was something here. You might get sick when you relax. Do you have that going on, Libra? So it's like, you know, your body knows to be sick when you're on holiday. Yes, this could be, I'll put here, illness. Oprah Winfrey talked about that. She talked about how, you know, she'd have a migraine on the weekend or and that every three months when she'd get a week off or something, she'd be sick for that whole week. And then she'll be perfectly fine when she has to do her work. Yes, I can see that. Okay, yep. That, I knew I wrote that for some reason because <laughs> I'm sort of <laughs> trying to explain my way through it. But no, this makes sense. Um, I've also got here that you might meet friends in spiritual circles or retreats who aren't good for you. Isn't that interesting? Because you might think, how do I meet friends? And you might think, oh, because you see Jupiter is lording this house here. So it could be that you meet, and I'll put it in inverted commas, spiritual friends spiritual friends right because because you think they're spiritual because they were at the Eckhart Tolle talk and you think oh this is going to be a nice friendship and then but it turns out it's not something along those lines right so that is something to bear in mind uh, now what's the boundary here the boundary is Jupiterian in nature 
Okay. So it's self-study. This is the knowledge is power thing. Knowledge is power. What you want to do is you want to learn about psychology, self-development, men and women, friendship dynamics, you know, narcissist empath, codependent, independent, interdependent, all these various things. There are so many things. You can study all these various things, all these Jupiterian things. Jupiter will love studying all these things. You'll gain a lot of power through all your knowledge and you'll be making very wise choices and you won't have to deal with, with too many problems. Libra. So that is what I have for you. Let me know in the comments below how this um, plays out. Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. How are you doing? How are we doing on time? I think we're okay. What's going on, Scorpio? Let's have a look. So I've written next to your title, I've written the best. You've got the best setup. Now, you're going to ask why. Why do I have the best setup? Because you can do something about this one, okay? You've got the most control over this. Now, when we're having a look at this here, enemies, who's your biggest enemy? You know what I'm going to say. I bet some of you know. You're all a bit psychic here. You know, I'm going to say you're, you yourself can be your own worst enemy. You yourself. Right, so that's why I like this one the best. Because the remedy is easy. You just have to work with you. You don't have to work with anyone else. Okay, so you yourself can be your own worst enemy. And I've got here, yeah, great, because you can do something about it. You can transform the whole thing, yeah. This is the height of the spiritual path. When you're really doing the spiritual path, you operate in such a way that you recognize that the world is mirroring me back to me. So I'm just conscious that the camera is going to cut out. It's probably going to cut out at a really pivotal moment that I'll lose my train of thought. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to stop the memory card because it's 23 minutes. Okay, so what was the concept that I was explaining? When you're really on the spiritual path, you recognize that all is one and that I am connected to the all is one. So therefore, in a sense, it's, it's hard leap for us to make, I know, but we're, therefore I am part of the all is one. Okay. So when you judge something and you judge it really harshly, you stuff it down and you repress it so much that it kind of pops out in the form of a person in the world. And that person comes to you and it's like, you think that they're a separate being, but it's actually your own stuff that's been pushed down and it's kind of popping back out through the world, if, if you know what I mean. I was explaining this better in a client reading today. Anyway, yours is brilliant because all you have to do is change yourself and the problems go away. So I, I, I really think you've got the best set up here. Um, the remedy, oops, oh, the eraser. There we go, now I've got the pen. So the remedy, okay, let's have a look at this, is Mars. All you have to do is do something. Uh, do something. <laughs> now what is the thing that you're going to do? It's all those doing, you just have to act. And it's, I've got here the word, the remedy is also discipline. So it's discipline, disciplined action. There we go. Now we've got the remedy. Disciplined action is what's going to transform your whole world. So this is creating the good habits. This is 
waking up early, sleeping on time. This is cleaning up your diet. This is cleaning up your room. This is running your life like an efficient machine. Okay, Mars. Yours is brilliant, Scorpio, because you're not dealing particularly with other people. If you are dealing with other people who are problematic, who are difficult, then it could well be that it's something that you've suppressed. You've judged it harshly. You've suppressed it. You've stuffed it down. You've stuffed it down. And then it, it springs back through the mirror of the world, through the form of a difficult person. But the thing, all you have to do is change you. This is not about having anything to do with anyone else. This is just about how do I change me and then my problems go away. That's what this is. I, I really like yours the best. It's the most empowered setup, what you've got here for the sixth house. Sixth house is a challenging house. A lot of problems can come through here, but you can be the most empowered potentially. Uh, of all the different signs here. I really like it, Scorpio. I hope you do too. You can let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm going to have to speed it up. I realize this, this video is going to be a big one to edit. Um, who are your enemies? Well, I've got an interesting one here for you, Sagittarius. Could be people from childhood. Um, people from childhood. People from long ago, old connections, could also be um, siblings or friends that turn into enemies as well. You do have that potential here. And it can also be women in particular. Isn't that interesting? It could be women. Um, Female, yeah, females could be challenging for you. It's a possibility. Not necessarily so. It's just something to observe. Some of you may have some pattern with that. Some of you may not. Now I've got here the remedy. It's something to do with Venus. And I've got here... Um, Yeah, this one's quite interesting. Be choosy and seek beauty on the inside. We've got Mrikshira here as part of Taurus, right? It's the deer that seeks beauty. So you, what you're looking for is you're looking for, when you're looking for friends, for example, or people who are going to be suitable friends, you're looking at who they are on the inside and not how they look physically or how their life looks as well. Okay, so sometimes you, you see someone and their life looks, wow, they look, they, they look really stable. They've they got a good job. They have, you know, I don't know, nice things or something. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to think how people do this whole, I don't see people that way. You can imagine. I want to look at their chart but um, yeah I mean sometimes people how they choose people and things like that so they sort of look at their stuff or their life or they look at all these superficial things but I've got here seek beauty on the inside people aren't how they look there's something about this so seek beauty and you guys in my audience would already be doing that I know beauty on the inside these are things that we probably encounter when we're young and growing up and all that but yeah so that's it for you Sagittarius we are now going to welcome Capricorn Capricorn welcome thank you so much for joining so who might your enemies be well Capricorn for you it's just really simple and classical actually could be friends could be friends that turn into enemies friends could be younger siblings Could be critics. Could be that people become critical, maybe bosses at work become critical, that kind of thing. Competitors at work. I would imagine that you would have to compete 
at work as well, that's going to be important. In order for you to get ahead at work, you'll need to be good at handling criticism. That's going to be important. And I think the boundary for you is mercurial in nature. So it's going to be important for you to communicate who you are. It's also going to be important for you to shine. Okay, here we've got fire, firehouse, firehouse. Ninth house. You must shine. You must be seen. You must fill the space. You must say who you are. You see, sometimes with a boundary, it's not so much about pushing somebody out. It's more about filling the space with ourselves. You see, so if you've got a lot of empty space, nature abhors a vacuum. So maybe people are coming into that space. No, you're not pushing people out. You're filling the space with this is who I am. So I think communication, communicate who you are. Communicate who you are. And this is in a logical, strategic, and I'm going to say non-emotional way. Yeah. And that's that's it Capricorn. That's that's all you need to do there. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So what's going on when it comes to enemies? All right. Well, this one Aquarius. Now, I want to be as gentle as I can when I say this, but um, the truth of it is, you've got Cancer here, Cancer Moon Mother. Okay, it could be your mother. You might have had some pretty big arguments with mother. That is a possibility, depending on how your moon is placed. Um, now, if not mother, it could be significant females. In authority positions. Just put roles. This could be bosses. This could be um, yeah, basically women who are in charge in some way uh, and they, they could be difficult. And this is the kind of thing that you might have had to go through at a time in your life, but it's not going to always be the case. Okay, this, this can all heal and, and become very lovely. So don't, don't worry about anything. This is not like permanent or anything. But what is your boundary? Okay, your boundary can be created by the moon. Now how the moon would go about this is recognizing that my feelings matter. Okay, so you need to value your feelings. You need to do it first. And then other people will respect your feelings as well. But you need to value your feelings first. You need to recognize that, hey, my feelings matter. And you possibly need to communicate that. Or you need to look after your feelings or you need to protect your feelings. Just sort of having a look at the hidden aspect of this. I'm also kind of recognizing here yeah, that people could be careful who you tell your secrets to. That would also apply to Gemini, by the way, and who else? Libra. Yeah, be careful who you tell your secrets to. Who you confide in. And I mean, Aquarius, you can be a little bit of a loner, you know, that, that is part of um, the Ascendant here. 
and with this moon you know you, you really can't you will become your own best friend but then that's great because then you know, this is all wonderful for healing then you become a space within which others heal you become your own best friend yeah Aquarius I want to thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Pisces how are we doing on time we're not too bad Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining Pisces what have we got going on here okay we have got Leo right in the sixth so when we're looking at who could be an enemy it could be oh and my battery is flashing that's so annoying doesn't matter I shall power through running out of energy I wonder if there's any meaning in that got a new memory card let's get going okay no it's a new battery new battery okay what are we doing here so who could it be yes I mean who could be your enemy um, this could be now Leo can be you know the son the father okay so this could be I will put father here or um, people in positions of authority This could also be your children. Okay, maybe, you know, you've got adult children and they become very difficult in your later years. Could be your staff if you are a boss, your partner if you are dating. Oops. Just put here romantic partner. What is the remedy for this? Now, I think some of you actually are really going to appreciate this remedy uh, if, because my audience is filled with very, very spiritual people. So you guys are going to appreciate this. But some of people, if you're not so spiritual, this advice would be frustrating. But because you're all very spiritual, I know you're going to understand what I'm saying here. The boundary, we've got the sun. The boundary is to be yourself. Okay, and that's be yourself. Now, for some people, when you tell that to some people, they, they don't like hearing it because they're like, oh, that's so abstract. What does that mean? What do I need to do? Being yourself is, is being who you are. That's what you were born to do. So you have to be yourself. So it's really interesting, Pisces. It's kind of like, because you're not a fighter as such. I'm looking at your ascendant here and I'm sort of factoring in a few different things. And I think with Pisces, Pisces are gentle beings. They're not, they're not huge fighters necessarily. You can though, I mean, you can fight. I'm sort of looking at your ninth house here. But look at that, the way you'll do so, I mean, yeah, I'm looking at a few things. The way you would fight is kind of... Um, mm, I'm also looking at this now. It's more spiritual. Yeah, it's not a... Um, not at all a battle or any of that be yourself I really think you guys would appreciate this guidance I think this would make a lot of sense to you your boundary your boundary is in how you be I've got written here I've also got written be yourself and I've also got written here be creative and I sometimes do that when I look back on events or things or something that happened and I think to myself how if I'm not happy with how I handled it I think to myself how would I have liked to have handled it and very often when I think about how I would have liked to have handled it I would have liked to have been the bigger person I would have liked to have handled it with humor with grace with style 
you know, definitely humour. Um, that is always a wonderful way of handling things. And I feel like, because you do have Leo here, this is children, this is play, this is creativity, this is, yeah, it's like, you know, if, if, if an enemy comes into your zone, it's like the spiritual way is that you expand. Um, you understand exactly where they're coming from. You have compassion. You, you know, can, can even uh, help these people, you know. So it's in the way you be which is pretty interesting and that's and what you have to do is be yourself setting a boundary and this is I think I talked about this a couple of signs ago I can't remember which one I'm more flustered because I had to change the camera battery and now I've forgotten but a couple of signs ago I said um, and I'll turn this off now I had said that sometimes with boundaries it's not so much you know um, setting a, like you know when we officially hang on did I yes I think I switched it off good uh, when we're setting a boundary because how I see boundaries as well it's like it's where you end and where I begin so to define that now sometimes people um, and I have this where I kind of guard my space it's like well hey I'm allowed to have space a lot of people see all this nice space and they think they want to come in and fill it. And it's like, no, 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 you're not allowed. You know, it's like, so boundary, no. <laughs> but a way to have your boundary, you may not even have to say no because you have filled your space with you. You are being you. You have filled the space. You, you know, and that doesn't necessarily mean your diary is filled with lots and lots of appointments. No, you should be able to not have any appointments and for that to be guarded and protected if that's what you want. You see, so th this is the self. This is Leo, the self. It's like if I, if I want to have an entire week of nothing, I can have that and no one in it, right? It's like Leo is like, I, I'm going to have that. You know, Leo, Leo will make that happen. Um, yeah, I think that is definitely, so that's a thing of boundaries. It's like sometimes you don't need to define an official boundary as such. You just need to be more expressive, fill the space with who you are. So it's more like a, um, rather than telling, you are showing, you are demonstrating, you are being, you are being yourself and that's enough. You don't need to do more than that. You don't need to explain yourself or you don't need to justify or you don't need to do all these things. You just need to be who you are. Pisces and anybody who's watched the whole video, I know we do have a few people who like to watch all of these and, and you're welcome everyone. You're welcome to leave a comment below uh, and let me know how you got on with this content and any insights you have for your sign because it really helps other people. The insights you guys are sharing in the comments below are just terrific I'm loving it so I really want to thank you to those of you who share and I look forward to seeing you next time